Guys, you're looking at the title of the video, you're looking at the thumbnail, you already know what time it is. It is time to get active. Video for today is racism to blame for the high rates of overweight black women. This one was sent to me on my Instagram, at Mediocre Tourism Reviews. There's a link in my description box to go and follow me. I look at titles like this and I just automatically think, just how much power are you going to continue to give for other people regarding your own issues? That's the first thing that I think of. But let me put on my objectivity hat to go in here and see if I can potentially learn something new. Without further ado. We want us to, to, to hold up a little bit before we do this thing where we start blaming ourselves. Like, I hate when people talk about black women being obese. I hate it. Because it becomes a way to blame us for a set of conditions that we didn't create. We're moving, we're taking care of kids, but our food quality suffers. We are living in the Trump era. The research says that black women, when we do the same diets as white women, we lose less weight and we lose it slower, even when we're following the diet than our white women counterparts. Y'all already know I hear claims like that and I'm gonna go ahead and do the research my goddamn self. So I found an explanation uh, of the study that she's talking about, you see right here, study, black women lose less weight than white women on the same diet. I'll leave a link to this down in the description box down below so you guys can uh, do your own research as well. So let's go over and take a look at some of the notes on here just so we can all have an understanding of what it is that they are talking about. So this report of the study was back in 2013. Black women lose less weight than white women even if they follow the exact same exercise and diet regimen researchers report. The reason behind this finding is that black women's metabolisms, metabolisms run more slowly, which decreases their daily energy burn, okay? Said the study author, James Delaney, an associate professor of Division of Endocrinology and Metabolism. African-American women have lower energy expenditure. They're going to have to eat fewer calories than they would if they were Caucasian and or increase their physical activity more, said Delaney. His report is published in the International Journey Journal of Obesity. So the research itself included 66 white and 69 black women who were placed under the same calorie restricted diet on an average of 1800 calories a day for six months. Right. The black woman lost eight pounds less on average than the white woman. OK, eight pounds. Eight pounds is really not a a huge difference, but eight pounds is eight pounds, uh, you know, so we'll, 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 we'll keep going. The explanation can't be that black women didn't adhere to the diet and exercise plan, said Delaney. The researchers closely tracked the calories each woman ate and the calories they burned through exercise. Okay, my first initial thought is 1,800 uh, calories per day, 66 white, 69 black, eight pounds less on average, Eight pounds less on average still doesn't explain away morbid obesity. It, it still doesn't explain it away. This is new news for me. I didn't know anything about this. Uh, I got to look up more research, more studies to see if there's any um, other studies that combat what this was or the sample size that they used. But this is new news for me. Like I said, sometimes I'm often surprised because <laughs> I would have never thought about the metal metabolisms being slower on account of racial makeup. We found African-American women and the Caucasian women eating nearly identical amounts of calories, all right? And they were as adherent in physical activity as well. This leaves variation in body, body and metabolism IQ to explain the difference in weight loss success, the study author said. Last thing I wanted to point out, the one reason for the difference might be the European foods pre that are prevalent in America and form the basis of the modern diet, these foods might not burn as efficiently in the descendants of people born from Africa, Asia, or other parts of the world. As I said, sometimes I am surprised with new information. That's why I always try to go in here 
with my objectivity hat to see if I can learn something new. But what I say applies in a sense that eight pound difference over that time period doesn't explain the high rates of overweight and obesity and morbid obesity within the community. Let's keep going. The research says that black women, when we do the same diets as white women, we lose less weight and we lose it slower, even when we're following the diet than our white women counterparts. And what, and what public health practitioners think is that our stress responses in the body change our metabolism. It's literally that the racism that you're experiencing and the struggle to make ends meet actually means the diet don't work for you the same. What's interesting with what she was saying at the end right there is that the researchers say uh, the stress response um, and then what she pulled out of the stress response and actually the article that we went over didn't mention the stress response, but I'll take her for what she's saying. Let's say that there's some other opinion of the original resource study that then says uh, stressors in life. Um, so let's just, just go with that for a quick second. But um, to hop to that, to go to directly to uh, racism, uh, you know, is a uh, far stretch. It's a very far stretch. This is not a channel to combat if, you know, there's racism, you know, that exists today. But I know what does exist today, which I think is way more detrimental. And it's ridiculous amounts of victim um, mentality uh, and ridiculous amounts of those that choose not to seek accountability for the way that they treat themselves and as well as how they treat others, irrespective of all the things that make us different amongst each other. It seems inherently disingenuous to me to get an entire audience full of overweight black women and then she's bringing up unaccountable things in order to explain away how her body looks and as well as the bodies of those that are inside of that studio audience. If you look at people in America today, um, something like 30% of all people are listed as overweight in accordance to BMI and another 30-ish percent are listed as o obese as according to BMI. And there's some detractors when it comes to like kind of this medical term and definition. And I mean, I get it at the end of the day because muscle weighs more than fat. So there could be those that are overweight, but because of the amount of muscle that's on their body, right? So it's kind of a uh, weird estimation, but it's something that's widely used, widely known. But the majority of people that are listed as overweight due to muscle far outnumbers those that are overweight due to excess fat on their body. Look, we live in America. This is a country of complete and utter excess. Is it more likely to believe that you are overweight because you eat too much and that you don't exercise enough? Or is it more likely to believe that racism is the reason for that? And I understand there's arguments from an institutional perspective. Uh, if you go down in a certain socioeconomic regions and the food deserts and the access to knowledge regarding good, healthy and quality foods. But a lot of the arguments regarding the access to uh, information about diets and food and stuff like that is beginning to go away now that every public library has access to Wi-Fi signals to get a hold of the Internet to do your own research and your own look into seeing what are the things that you should be putting into your body. I, I think that there is an issue regarding the access as well, and especially if you're a young child and you're being raised by overweight adults who don't understand this information, it, it is a problem. So that young child grows up being larger, and then a lot of the things that they should have learned earlier on, or a lot of the things that their parents should have put them in so that they understand the discipline that, it's that it takes in order to put put your body through rigor, through stressors, to get your mind more in accords with the stress that you have to put your body under to build muscle on your body or to lose fat. And they grow up not knowing these things or even understanding the positive benefits mentally of putting your body under stress and or rigor. Shit, you know, the majority of us spend, you know, eight, nine hours a day sitting in front of a computer. You know what I'm saying? Our bodies... Just as our bodies have not evolved beyond masculine and feminine, if you're a male and a female, our bodies not have evolved to the space where we're supposed to be doing that. Like this, this modern society of waking up, going somewhere, sitting down for eight, nine hours a day with random trips to the bathroom, random trips standing up to go talk to your friends or something like that is not what we were designed for. It's not what we were designed for. So you already have a dearth of exercise. 
and naturally burning calories throughout a day. But then in American culture, you have this excess. We have excess. And the thing is, is like, we don't realize how good you have it. We don't realize this shit until you go elsewhere. Shit, I did a study abroad and was in Finland, for example. Let me just give you a quick example of what it's like elsewhere. And I remember like walking into supermarkets and just thinking to myself, wait a minute. And I'm looking at the pack of meat and I'm just like, wait a minute, this is one portion size for y'all. <laughs> like you go to the checkout counters and it's not confectionery sweets and, you know, just sugary foods and stuff like that. Like you look around at all the women in, F in Finland and you, you barely can find overweight people. Overseas, they don't play with it like that. They, they don't. But then you also look at their health care and um, the way that their taxes are set up. And they are de-incentivized as an economy to push dirty foods onto people, right? Because they're going to pay for it at the back end with medical expenses. So again, I ask, is it more likely because of your lack of exercise and the amount of food pleasure that you put into your mouth? Or is it because of some other reason that has nothing to do with you? Listen, we're all affected by different macroeconomic things within the society today that makes us who we are today. But listen, no other place like in America can you craft who you want to be however you want to be. And that also goes for how your body is to look. It also goes for that as well. So are you taking a complete and full accountability for where you are? Because if you are not, when we talk to this relationship shit, you know, listen, the type of dudes that you were generally going to be looking for are going to be looking at you without affection. Will there be some dudes that will like more cushion for the pushing? Yeah, sure. I, you know, but those are extreme outliers. So when you talk about maximizing your chances of your goals in life, and not even just your goals in life from a relationship perspective, but also living longer. Shit, how many of the top diseases in the United States is linked to obesity? Shit, most of them. Most of them are linked to heart, heart disease, diabetes. All of these things is, is heavily correlated with your management of mouth pleasure. So listen, at the end of the day, I think what needs to stop happening is this lack of accountability, right? And these pushing of, you know, the Lizzo's with their body positivity, swinging and gyrating their morbidly obese hips in front of a TV screen when they're really just projecting the validation that they hope to feel by all of the fake comments that are supporting something that's going to lead to an untimely death in an undeserved demise, at the end of the day, over here, we push accountability as well as uh, well-being for yourself in order to get you closer to success and joy within your life. There's no way you are as joyous as you want to be if your body is morbidly obese. For the seven and a half ladies that are watching, just understand that dudes are visual in nature and we are watching those things. Don't let these high-level panderers make you feel like it's okay to be thick when thick is actually obese. You understand? Questions, comments, concerns? Y'all already know what to do. Mediocre to tourism reviews at gmail.com. Guys, did I get this one correct? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm down there now. Let's have a conversation about it. All right? Until next time, YouTube.